G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're going to be resuming our normal programming, sort of cutting down on the rants, if you will. Uh, not that it isn't something that needs to be done, but honestly, it is very good to get back to a little bit more light-hearted content. Uh, today, we're going to be having a look at the F4E Phantom II. Um, I basically have a lot of footage of this plane lying around, and so I thought I might discuss sort of some of the things that you really do in the F4E. Uh, this plane in particular is one of those altitude kings. You need to get to your altitude and you need to use that altitude, particularly with your AIM-7Es, uh, to really bring about the full effect of the plane. The F4E is one of the most competitive, if not, in certain circumstances, the most competitive plane in the game, uh, for top tier at least, alongside the MiG-21 BIS. Uh, I am told that the MiG-21 BIS is ever so slightly overperforming, but that doesn't mean that the F4E is totally useless. You do have a little bit of things that you can, uh, uh, sort of, arsenal of things that you can do uh, in order to avoid getting absolutely destroyed by uh, MiG-21 BISs. Uh, not only that, but the team composition for the uh, other teams, I guess, the non-American and Japanese team, tend to be sort of a little bit mixed in with sort of lower tier planes, uh, and you tend to have a lot more F4Es and F4Ejs on your team as Americans, and that's what you can really make use of uh, at this particular battle rating. So, you might notice that I am doing a little bit of climbing. I want to really talk about the climb here because I think it's quite important. Uh, this particular match isn't going to go quite as well, so we're going to have one that doesn't go quite as well, and then we have one that goes nicely uh, and is a, a real good time for everyone. So, the uh, F4E here as I said, is an altitude king. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to climb out off to the side a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to climb directly in because that's going to be a little bit too aggressive. The F4E doesn't have the acceleration, particularly at altitude for this type of stuff. Uh, and it's just too risky overall. You're more likely to run into lots of opponents. So climbing off to the side, normally off to the left of your runway is going to give you the best opportunity because in general, everyone climbs off roughly to the left when they take off from the airfield. So after you do a little bit of a climb, I would get to about 5,000 to 6,000 meters. That's your ideal uh, combat altitude for War Thunder at least. In real life, maybe not so. Um, a lot of people might suggest climbing off, sort of spiraling over your airfield, but honestly, uh, turning too much is a bit of a waste of time uh, and will waste energy in the process. I would suggest uh, a little bit more aggressiveness, not totally unbridled aggressiveness, but uh, controlled aggression when it is necessary. Uh, this type of aggression you tend to find uh, a lot in my videos actually, because that's my kind of playstyle. You uh, become aggressive, you turn, you bleed speed when you need to, but when it's time to stay fast, you stay fast. And that is exactly what gets you the most stonks, if you will. So we're in a situation here where there are plenty of enemies at altitude. You can see the radar is going absolutely ballistic, uh, and there is a Mirage 3C sitting right above. So I'm going to use my uh, little squarey radar thing. I don't really know what it's called. Um, and honestly, I'm just going to call it the little square. I'm going to line up the AIM-7E and have a look at it go off. Now, the reason why it decides to track is because if you have a look at that little ring that is around the, uh, the radar just before it disappeared there, that basically means, you can see it again here as I engage the next target, it will be within range as the target comes in, which means that the uh, missile is going to be within range. I fuck it up though, um, and I barely, barely dodge a uh, Matra, I think it's an R550 or an R530, I can't remember which one it is. The, the not magic. So, now I'm in a bit of a pickle. I have a couple of enemies that are above me. I needed to get a little bit more altitude this game, uh, and I can see that there's a MiG-21, and I'm going to launch an AIM-9E. This is my last AIM, uh, sorry, my AIM-7E. This is my last one, uh, and the MiG-21 here is not going to have the speed and is not sort of aware enough to realize that there is an AIM-7E heading straight towards him, and that's because he's a PFM. Poor PFM. Uh, I felt really bad, actually, killing a PFM, but now I'm out of AIM-7s, and this isn't a bad thing, because you want to use your AIM-7s at altitude. Um, using them at ground will result in ground clutter, sort of uh, fogging up your radar. As you can see by the little hazy thing looking at my uh, radar over there, I'm going to look at 
aim nines now. My aim nines are my dogfighting missiles. The aim sevens are my intercepting missiles. And so I'm going to try and engage in a pseudo dogfight, if you will, with a J35D. Uh, kind of like a, a high speed pass, if you will. Unfortunately, the missile is not uh, patently locked as I managed to get within range. I would use these within three and a half kilometers and uh, maybe less. Obviously, the Mirage didn't really see that one coming. I managed to boot the Mirage beautifully with a uh, lovely missile. And now I have a Mirage coming in after the F-104. So I'm going to prep a missile, get ready to yeet it towards the uh, Mirage. And I just managed to do it, except the Mirage just flies away. Beautiful job from that Mirage to uh, dodge the missile. And of course, a little bit of an ambitious one. So, whilst the Mirage is still burning, he uh, manages to actually get shot down there, and the J-35D cops a little missile. This is where the Phantom really shines, and it's simply because the Phantom has lots of uh, energy capabilities. It's a very fast plane, and it doesn't dump speed in a turn. It's able to really get on top of things like this. Now, here's where I make my mistake. I fall in front for the FGR-2 instead of looking out for the Mirage, and I waste a missile on the FGR-2, which has flares, now I turn for the MF, and there is a Mirage right behind me. The thing that you should not be doing in Phantoms is turn fighting. Make sure you look out for what's behind you, and look out for what you're going to slot in behind, or slot in front of. And in this case here, I'm basically fucked. The Mirage, if he doesn't kill me, the FG-1 will. Uh, and honestly, I'm not really against an FG-1 getting a kill on me, uh, because they're struggle buses as it is. But unfortunately, it is the Mirage that does manage to take me out. You see, if I play stupid, I win stupid prizes, and in this case, this was absolutely no exception. Well, in this particular match, we are going to be dealing the stupid prizes out to the MiGs. Uh, we have a little bit better of a team in terms of their capabilities, uh, and again, what I'm going to be doing is side climbing. Now, this is preparation for landing on Hokkaido, uh, and in this particular map, there isn't really a general rule of uh, climbing. A lot of people don't really climb in any particular fashion they sort of just go straight off the runway and uh, over the left hand side of screen I'm not sure if that's north south east or west someone let me know in the comments because I can't quite remember I think it's east um, but I'm just going to say left so they're all climbing off that sort of left hand side there uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go away from the battle again just to get a little bit of altitude but uh, a lot of people have been coming along here a little bit lately uh, and so I might end up having to force myself into early combat which is not good for the uh, the Phantom. It needs a little bit more time just like your average American prop your boom and zoomer to really gain that altitude to seat itself in the advantageous position and then execute with your superior weaponry. Because let's face it, whilst the R60s are very good, the R3Rs do not stand a chance against the AIM-7s. I think the AIM-7 is a better weapon system by a very long shot, and you have an extra two missiles compared to something like the 21 BIS. So if you don't use them, then you're basically wasting the potential of your plane, which is definitely not a good thing. Now, I have noticed that uh, I think I've spotted a dot here, uh, and I'm trying to follow that on. You can see the little uh, ping on the radar, and it is an FGR-2. FGR-2s are surprisingly deadly because they also have AIM-7Es. Uh, and honestly, putting FGR-2s with the Americans and the Japanese is probably how it should have gone. Uh, but I'm going to sort of send a Yita off to this FGR-2. I think he's going to dodge it uh, or sort of avoid it somehow. Uh, but the FGR-2 pops, I think he pops flares for it. Uh, and that is basically the smart thing to do. So what I'm going to do is waste another missile on the FGR-2 and uh, hopefully this time he's distracted enough to get absolutely yeeted. And there he goes. Next target here is a Harrier. Uh, unfortunately, the Harrier is sort of heading towards me. Now, when a Harrier is heading, heading towards you like this, chances are it's a GR-1. Uh, try and stay fairly close in your, uh, in your sort of circle towards him so he can't lock you with an SRAM. Now, here I'm starting to get into some real doo-doo. I have a Mirage 3C and a 21MF looking straight at me. So I'm going to put the nose down, pick up a bit of speed, and I can outrun the uh, MF, I think, very barely. But the Mirage, I can't. And the Mirage decides he's going to go off and uh, enjoy some tea or something. Maybe some baguettes, maybe some uh, champagne. But um, I'm going to be enjoying my flares. What I'm doing here is I'm flying in a spiral uh, in order to make the flares sort of 
concentrate or, or, or to make the missile concentrate on the flares uh, and then I'm going to turn now I don't have to turn off my afterburner but it certainly helps uh, and I've noticed here that the MiG-21 MF is uh, alone so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit impatient I'm going to pop a little bit more flares use this opportunity to bleed a little bit of speed and so the MiG-21 will come in and overshoot the mark I pull out so that the MiG-21 does not get a hand onto me pop my flaps prep a missile and get ready for lining up a shot. Now, this only works because I have bled so much speed and it would only have worked once. If I had a teammate around me, I would have been more than happy to do that multiple times, but uh, it is extremely risky and this MiG-21 MF overshot the mark and played his cards very poorly. So, I get myself a really beautiful reversal in uh, the F4E against a MiG-21 MF and now it's back to being on the front foot. Now, of course, the uh, MiG-21 is better at low altitude compared to the Phantom. The Phantom is your high altitude king. Um, but if you have a lot of teammates at low altitude, use those AIM-9Js. You have plenty of good missiles and of course you have plenty of good guns. I'm going to open up the guns a little bit on the MF. The FGR-2 manages to oof itself with a missile. And I'm going to be saving my teammate here in the F4EJ with a beautiful missile. Isn't it lovely? That close teamwork really does pay off because as soon as a, an enemy is distracted, then they're basically fucked and there's nothing that they can do. Speaking of absolutely fucked, this Harrier, there is nothing he can do. I launch an AIM-7 and I think he dodges it, which is pretty impressive. Um, I suppose he does see it, uh, which makes it a little bit less impressive, but uh, this leaves me with only sparrows. So I actually don't have any AIM-9s and this is going to leave me in a bit of a precarious situation. I think I'm also out of cannon, which doesn't help at all. And now I'm within the range of the uh, the Sparrow's like flight time, or it's uh, it has a one kilometer sort of distance that it travels away from the target in order to, I guess, uh, not confuse its radar signature or the correct radar signature with the friendly, uh, and therefore like go and hit the friendly or something like that. Um, so the F4EJ finishes the Harrier GR1 off with a beautiful aim. 9 I think it is? I th it, that looks like an AIM-9 judging by the way it's flying. Like I said, your AIM-9s are your dogfighters, your AIM-7s are interceptor missiles. You should be using your interceptor missiles for this particular sort of circumstance. Uh, I picked up a nice 4 kills and I could have my 5th here but I am down to my sparrows which leaves me very limited. Using your AIM-9s early on uh, at high altitude is not exactly recommended although you can do it. Uh, if the the engagement ranges are a little bit short, I would still use the AIM-7s anywhere between 12 and 5 kilometers. Something like the MiG-21 MF or the MiG-21 PFM uh, rather that you saw earlier that I killed with a radar missile is sort of the uh, engagement that you would want to be using an AIM-7 instead of an AIM-9. So, the Phantom itself, is it actually still c uh, capable? I, I certainly think it is and you know what, If you some of you are good. Don't, don't come to altitude tomorrow, and that's probably what the, uh, the title of the video is going to be, because this plane isn't altitude king. Speaking of king, the F4EJ uh, decides to take my radar signature, and this leaves me in a really shit spot, because I don't have any other missiles, I don't have any other ammo, because I wasted it all because I'm a potato, but that doesn't matter, because when you have teamwork, anything is possible. The F4EJ here is probably going to get the kill, he sets the Mirage on fire, and um, I'm sorry man, you're... You should have returned to base and landed and bailed, but um, you know what? Thank you for putting up a good fight. It was really good to uh, at least have someone sort of see it through, although I certainly wouldn't be mad if you landed and bailed. So, ladies and gents, that is the pure power of the F4E Phantom. It is a really strong plane, uh, but it has to be used in the correct circumstances, and things like MiG-21 Bisses need to be sorted out quickly and ideally with teammates. Now, I know War Thunder is supposed to be a team game and no one plays it like that, but unfortunately you do have to use your teammates even if it is just as bait. So ladies and gents, that will do it for today. I thank you for watching. I had an absolute blast playing the top ranks and uh, hopefully I can see that through with the new absolutely rubbish battle rating changes. Um, there'll be a video on my channel on that that you can see uh, maybe on the cards below. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.